vigilance, the action or state of keeping careful watch, standing guard, defending the bulwark between the righteous and the godless. Hey everyone, Lance Earl here. It is August 1st, 2016, and I just had a very interesting phone call. Um, a few weeks ago, I addressed the city council in uh, Twin Falls, Idaho. And while I was there, I challenged them constitutionally. I asked for a constitutional justification for some of the nonsense that they are pulling in that city. And their nonsense is, in my opinion, severe. While I was there, while I was doing that, I also challenged Police Chief Kingsbury because he has stepped way outside of the boundaries that are supposed to constrain him. He is coloring way outside the lines. So anyway, I have telephoned him on several occasions since that city council meeting, and I was about convinced that he wasn't going to call me back, and he did today. I told him that I would be in Twin Falls all day on Friday, and I could meet with him at any time, and I would really like to have an opportunity to meet with him. He asked what would it be about, and I told him I'm concerned about constitutional violations that are occurring there. And I assured him that I'm not his enemy, I'm not there to make him look silly, but I am there to help him and his officers do their job better. He said, nah, I know everything I need to know about the Constitution. Nah, I'm going to respectfully decline. Well, I didn't let it go at that. I assured him that if we talked, that if we sat down, I could show him five or six constitutional violations that he enforces every day. I assured him that I could do that. He said, oh, that's just your interpretation of the Constitution. I said, no, sir. No, sir. I'm not talking about what you think or what I think. Let's go directly to the Constitution. Let's see what the words say. And then we can even turn to the founders and see what the founders said that the words meant, in case there's any confusion. I was happy to do that with this man. He continued to decline. He continued to assert that he was a good cop and that he understood the Constitution. And I continued to assert that if he was, and if by chance there are some things that he's doing that are in violation of the Constitution, and if he was really, really a good cop, he would want to know about those things so he could correct them. He said, nah, nah. <sighs> so we talked a little more. I tried to persuade him, and he assured me that I simply could not show him anywhere where he was in violation of the Constitution. Well, that's simply not true. What he's really doing is he's hiding. He knows some of the questions I asked when I was before the city council. He knows that those questions cannot be answered constitutionally. He knows that he is on the wrong side of the law, and so he's hiding. He's going into hiding. He is taking the route of a coward because he has sold out. His principle is gone. His integrity is gone. So here's the drill. You see, the Idaho State Constitution declares that he must take counsel from the people. He said, well, you're not my people. I said, well, I represent some of the citizens of Twin Falls who are members of a men too. He said, well, you're still not my people. You don't live here. Fair enough. So here's the plan. Actually, it's a two-part plan. I am calling on every member of a men too to call the chief of police and tell him that you would like to stop by and have a meeting on Friday <laughs> Friday, August 5th, to discuss his position on the Constitution. And when you have that meeting, I'll be there. I will come and speak with you, or I will speak for you. I don't care, but I will be there. Now, here's the thing that I suspect. I suspect that he's no more interested in hearing from you, the citizens, the citizens of Twin Falls, than he is interested in hearing from me. And so if we can't get in front of him, I would like to offer you one other thing. On Friday, August 5th, we will be at a picnic at City Park in Twin Falls. I'll be doing a fundraiser there, but I will also be uh, 
taking a few minutes out to speak. I'm going to talk about three essential principles that people must understand if they want to remain free. But these three essential principles also are critical to understanding the Constitution. Then we will apply those principles to the very actions of your sheriff and your town council. I will, in fact, prove again and again and again that those people who you have voted or hired to serve you are, in fact, violating the Constitution. I will prove to you again and again and again that I have shown them that this is the case and that they have ignored me because they simply do not care. So here's what I'd like to ask you to do. Again, try to get an appointment if you can. I'll be there. I'll be where with you. Anytime before uh, 4 o'clock, I can, I can make that appointment. And then, if, uh, if you can't make that work, please show up at the picnic. Come hungry. I understand there will be food. And bring your friends. Bring as many friends as you want. If you are concerned about the trajectory of our nation, of our state, and even of our city, this is the time to stand up. The days of waiting are past. The days of thinking that government will fix itself are completely gone. Either we take it back, either we stand up and defend our rights so that we can protect our children and our children's children, or we crawl. It's completely, totally up to you. I'm Lance Earl. I'll see you soon. Aye, chapter two. I, uh... It's been a Twin Falls day, I suppose. I got a second call. This one was from Matt Christensen, the editor at the Times News in Twin Falls. You see, he had written an article uh, about the, the Muslim crisis and what's going on in Twin Falls, and he attacked a group of people. He called them names. You see, one of the tactics of the unprincipled person is to first villainize, demonize, criminalize, dehumanize your opponent. And once you have done that, if you have done that successfully, <laughs> then you can say anything you want to say about that person. And the uninformed will believe it. That was the tactic that Matt used in an attack against Julie Ruff and what did he call the rest of us? Her ilk. Her ilk. <laughs> so I, uh, I had a, a conversation about, about Matt, and he kept <laughs> trying to move the goalpost. He kept wanting to make it about Julie. Well, the column that I wrote, the rebuttal that I wrote, wasn't about whether Julie and her ilk were right or wrong. The column was about Matt Christensen. The column was about an unprincipled, unscrupulous coward who uses the platform of the paper for his own purposes and blocks anyone else who has a contrary view. You see, Matt told me that he is not afraid at all to publish those who see things differently than him. And yet he refuses to publish my column, a column in which I clearly illustrated those things that I just said. But here's the, huh, here's the point I want to make. Uh, Matt told me during the conversation that he allows Julie Ruff full access to the paper, that she submits letters to the editor all the time, and that he publishes them all the time. Well, I thought, ah, oh, that doesn't sound right. I have heard differently. So I telephoned Miss Ruff, and I just asked her, I said, do you write letters to the editor? And when you do, does Matt Christensen publish them? And she said, no, uh, no, I have never, ever, ever, ever written a letter to the editor. She says, that's something I just don't do. It's not my thing. So I've never written a letter to the editor, and therefore, Matt Christensen has never published a letter to the editor. 
that I submitted. <sighs> you know, Matt, you kept telling me truth matters. Truth matters, you said again and again and again. Truth matters. And again, that was your attempt to <laughs> change the landscape, to put the focus on Julie and the things that she said, which you claim to be untrue, and, and, and maybe some of them are. I don't know. I haven't verified some of those things. But the simple truth is, I don't think you can produce a single letter to the editor, which was written by Julie Ruff and which you published. I don't think you can do it. And I'll be by your office on Friday to pick up any and every letter to the editor from Julie Ruff published by you that you can produce. I want to see them. I want to hold you accountable because I think you're not. I think you're not accountable. I think you're not responsible. I think you are a coward. And I think <laughs> when I arrive at the newspaper office that you will be in hiding. For the second time, <laughs> I'm Lance Earl. I'll see you soon.